What's up, everybody? It is December 12th, Tuesday. We have a seven-game slate tonight. Um, not going to be as exciting as uh, yesterday's, as best I can tell, uh, without any crazy news. Looks like the value is pretty smooth tonight. Um, we got seven games, <laughs> seven o'clock start, so let's just dive in. Um, first game up is uh, Cleveland hosting the Hawks. Um, there is not a line on this right now, I believe. Let me double check that. Correct. So this is a made up line for me. In that made up line, I've got the Cavs as nine point favorites, um, which would be first on the slate, 112.5 implied total. And in this case, we want to take a look at LeBron. We want to look at Love. We want to look at Wade. Um, so let me grab the Cavs. Oh, a couple days rest for LeBron is interesting. He should be able to just do whatever he wants to the Hawks. I think we want to look at JR as well. Eh, JR and a GPP. I can't, I'm not going to speak to him specifically. I'm going to pass on Wade as well. Not really the Wade game. So, I mean, it's LeBron, and I don't really need to, like, <laughs> look into LeBron's day-to-day. -day. Um, he's probably one of the better plays of the day. Let's see where he lands for small forwards. Yeah, gigantic gap. You almost have to have LeBron tonight. There's value in other places, but the gap between him and Jimmy Butler is a is a giant one. So LeBron, lock in LeBron. <clears throat> he's the he's the linchpin for tonight. But there's nothing else to really look at. Um, like I said, Jr. for GPPs are fine. Um, and then Love looks really good. If you think. You know, if you're confident he's going to play, he needs 40, which he's done in three of his last six. Should be good for high 30s. Um, shouldn't really have any trouble with Atlanta's front court. So, you know, I'm comfortable saying love as well. But, you know, keep an eye on his injury news. Then to the Hawks. Um, not too much of interest here. Collins is back, as best I can tell, which might eat into, you know, Ilyasova, who's also up to 5,900. Um, so I think we could look at Collins, particularly on DK, where he's 5,500. And, you know, we'll look at the usual suspects. Um... Baysmore might actually be in play. Based on my line, it's a 103.5 implied total. Uh, middle of the pack for the night. But, you know, it's the Hawks. How excited can we be about wanting to have the Hawks? Okay. Nothing amazing right out of the gate. I will look at Collins. Probably Baysmore and Prince. So Collins, 6,200. He needs 31. Um, he's been out for the last five games. Did put up 30 in the game before he was out. Um, to me, it's a stay away. Uh, I didn't entertain him in GPPs, particularly on DK, but I'm nowhere near him in cash. Baysmore at 55, so that's 27. Um, you know, in and around the mid 20s, had a huge game on the ninth. Then the back to back, he kind of stepped down, got a night off. Um, you know, there are worse plays. I don't think that um, the entire slit, like nothing's opened up yet. So he's the kind of guy that his value 
tonight. And then Prince, 27-ish as well. Um, he's been right there, his last three. Really steady. If he keeps getting those minutes, I like it. Um, so I think both of them are in play. You know, I wouldn't be, like, building my lineup around Bazemore and Prince, but if you get down to your last two and it's, you know, one of those guys and somebody else, I don't see any problem with it. Now we'll go to uh, the Pistons. 107.75 um, is their implied total, which is fourth on the night. Hosting the Nuggets. Um, we definitely want to look at Drummond. I think that's a no-brainer with Millsap and Jokic both out. And then um, Ish Smith looks pretty good for uh, GPP. And I'm going to take a look at Avery Bradley. And I've been saying this for a while now. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. But Stanley Johnson on DK. Guard and forward eligibility, 3700 Just sort of always a... a worth a look at that price Whew. I must have got some really deep sleep having a lot of trouble waking up this morning even after a, a successful fantasy night where I didn't have Draymond Green or Danilo Gallinari yeah uh, I think Stanley looks really good on DK that should be a place that someone looks um I definitely want to look at Drummond, and I'd like to look at Bradley as well. That's probably it on this game. Oh, mm, yeah, probably. Well, what's Tobias Harris? Yeah. Okay. So, Avery Bradley needs 26, which he has done in two of his last three. He had two stinkers before that. Um... Not really concerned with any of the defense on the Nuggets, so I think Avery Bradley is pretty safe there. A lot of mid-tier guys tonight. Got a bad feeling about it. And now Drummond needs 46. Not there in the last two, but he did do it in three of his previous six. And four of eight. Um, but this is a good spot for him, I believe. You know, there's not a lot. You know, you shouldn't have to deal with much um, coming from the Nugs. God, it's cold weather. All right, Denver. Denver has a 100.75 implied total, which is 13th of 14 on the night. Um, just not a very good look, but we do need to look at Gary Harris. 6,000. Did his salary drop by, like, a shit ton? Yeah, Gary Harris down $900 um, since the 8th. Uh, Will Barton is up, however, to 78 again. So chances of wanting to take Barton are low. So we want to look at Gary Harris. I want to make sure that checks out, which it does. It makes me happy. So we want to look at Gary Harris, definitely. Um, and then, as much as I hate to say it, we need to look at Wilson Chandler. Probably Fareed. Oh, how is it only Tuesday? So, just getting it out of the way now, uh, there's not going to be a live before lock show tonight. Um, we have uh, this big garden um, that gets decorated with like Christmas decorations and stuff. So I'm going to be going to see that with the wife, taking the night off from fantasy, barring like it pouring down rain or something. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take the night off. Got to go see some decorations been trying to go for a couple years and we always uh don't buy tickets in time i so i set an alarm in my phone last year to buy tickets on november 30th and before my alarm from a year previous even went off they were already sold out 
but for some reason they released like two more days and we were able to hop on tickets. Weird shit. Okay, so Gary Harris, I'm just going to mark him down. Now that he's at that salary, it's a no-brainer. And then Wilson Chandler. Sure. Fareed, sure. Well, Fareed. I'm going to I'm going to not be on Fareed. It kind of makes me nervous. Not the best spot for him. Um, Wilson Chandler needs 22, put up 33 in his last game, and then in the teens, the three before that, so it's sort of boomy bust. Uh, I hope that there's better options than him, so I'm going to ignore it for right now. But it's it's just the Gary Harris show. He needs 30. Um, he hasn't been there in the last two, but put up 38, 30 plus in four straight before that, so... Um, yeah, he shouldn't be at 6000 He should be more expensive than that. And Will Barton at 78 is, what, 39 fantasy points? He's been over 40 in his last two, three of his last four, f four of his last six. Um, I'd just rather have Gary Harris at that salary. Now, on DK, I'll take Barton at 74 since Harris is 67. And you get the dual eligibility, so... I'd lean Barton on DK, Gary Harris on draft or on FanDuel. Gary Harris on FanDuel, Will Barton on DK. Make sure I'm getting that out correctly. We'll head to uh, we'll head to New York, where the Knicks host the Lakers. 108.25 implied total for the Knicks. I believe that's a real line. It is. Um, so Knicks have the third highest implied total for the night. Um, and the first guy we want to look at is uh, the Zinger, and I think that might be it. Although we can take a look at Cantor. And Porzingis on DK at 8,500 looks amazing. And I think that you can make a real good case for uh, Frankie Smokes, 3,600 on DK. But we'll dig in a little bit further. Lakers give up a ton of shots at the rim, right? Or do they get to the rim a lot? I don't remember. They give up a ton of shots at the rim. So that's gonna I'm gonna take a look at Cantor if we need a step down center. And then Maybe the zinger. So Cantor is 33. Hasn't done it in his last three. Hasn't even been close, really. Well, 29, I guess it's kind of close. With that total, I'll entertain it. He should have the abil ability to feast offensively. But Zinger, 9,700. So he needs like just under 50. He put up 50 in the last one. Um, got a night's rest, which is probably going to be really helpful for him. And it's the Lakers. There's, there's no one that can really check him. Zinigigis. Almost. Almost got it. And yeah, I'd take a look at Frankie Smokes on DK. But Zinger on DK especially. Should be relatively highly owned too. Head to the Lakers. Um, Lakers 104.75 implied total. It's 8th on the night. God, Contavious Caldwell Pope's stupid name is so long moves the column so much sorry yeah kcp you don't have a stupid name i apologize i assume that you watch this every morning just wondering wondering what i'm going to say about whether or not you should be drafted in a cash game in daily fantasy holy shit the knicks give up a lot of threes okay so we need to look at 
Lonzo. We need to look at KCP. We need to look at Kuz. Just need to look at everybody here. So Lonzo, 7,300 on FanDuel, 66 on DK. Um, so he needs 35 and change. He's hit that once in his last six. Knicks don't exactly have a ton of point guard defense. Uh, so I'm pretty comfortable with Lonzo tonight. If you can get him when his shot's falling, that's even better. Um, KCP needs 30. Hasn't been there in the last four. That's a little concerning. I'll probably not look there. Um, Brandon Ingram needs 35. He's been there in three of the last six. Who guards him? Yeah, Brandon Ingram seems like a, a good spot. Now, Julius Randle is at 5,300 and is and 4,800 on DK and is flying off the page. 25 fantasy points, which he's done in the last two, almost, and basically four of his last five. As long as Randle gets minutes, there's no reason for him to not hit value. Is that jive with his per minute play? It certainly does. So that looks great. No thanks on Kuz here, but I think Kuzma's fine on DK. He's been 35 plus two of his last three. I think Larry Nance is going to end up being the odd man out here. And if you want to punt center, um, I think there are worse options than Brooke Lopez. You know, he's got to deal with Cantor, which is not really dealing with anything. He's at 4,400, which is 22 fantasy points. Um, he's been there in three of his last four. And, you know, he might be able to pop a couple threes. It's not like Cantor's going to be able to get out on him. And, um, you know, like if Randall took Cantor into the paint, It'd be a problem. So uh, a lot a lot of Lakers on the list tonight. Now we'll go to Brooklyn. Um, Nets hosting the Wizards. Wizards three-point favorites at home or on the road. I believe this one's made up. No, this is real. Okay, cool. Even better. Real line makes me happy. Um, Brooklyn with the ninth highest implied total. And just a note from a matchup standpoint... I am projecting John Wall to be in the lineup tonight. Jaleel Okafor uh, supposed to make his debut for the Nets, which is um, wholly uneventful, but I'm happy for the Nets. I really wish they didn't make that... Um, well, like, in a way, I wish they didn't make the the crappy Mozgov, um D'Angelo Russell trade. I'm glad they got Russell, but I hate that they have Mozgov. But hopefully Okafor can play well. I'm rooting for him. Okay, not much of interest defensively across the board for Washington. So look at Levert, I guess. I don't think Okafor is in play. I've got him at 23 minutes right now. We have to see, you know, sort of what minutes he's going to get. He might be in play on DK. He's at 4,200, but he's way too expensive on FanDuel. Yeah, really, I'm going to look at Crab and Levert. Levert needs 30, and he has done that in three of his last five. Um... Eh, it just doesn't feel like it jumps off the page for me. Crab needs 22. Hasn't done it in his last four. Um, I think Brooklyn's just a flat stay away. Well, Dinwiddie, 35. Now, yeah, this is. A, I'm staying away from Brooklyn. We'll see uh, how their minutes shake out. Go to Washington. Like I said, I am assuming that John Wall does play. 
of them a little bit short on minutes. It's probably not going to be in play from a fantasy perspective, but it does sort of neuter Beal and Porter to a degree. Gortat, 4,700 against Brooklyn. It's not like Okafor can guard anybody. 23 for Gortat. He can get there. It wouldn't shock me to see his minutes trend back up with Wall. Um, yeah, I think Gortat is like the only piece of the Wizards that I'm interested in. Because they've got a 107.5 implied total. That's fifth on the night, which is, is solid. But like Beal and Porter's prices are inflated to have Wall out of the lineup. At least I think they do. Yeah, so Beal's still at 86. And then Porter is at 74, which is the highest he's been. So I don't want to pay those prices for them now. Um... I'd entertain Markeith Morris at... Yeah, I probably wouldn't entertain it at all. John Wall at DK is interesting. 8,200. That's not... If we get word that he's starting, I would entertain Wall at point guard on DraftKings. But for cash, it's pretty much just potentially Gortat, and that's it. Then we go to Minnesota. Minnesota. That's the best I can do. Uh, hosting the Sixers, this line I know for sure is fake. Yeah. Um, I'm no longer projecting Bielitsa in, so we've got... Well, you know the drill for the Wolves. They only play like seven guys, and everybody plays a boatload of minutes. So my made-up line says uh, Wolves favored by four. 109.5 implied total, which would be second on the night. And we need to look um, across the board at everybody. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What was I looking at? Minnesota. Minnesota. I'm going to try to work that in moving forward. So that should get um, incredibly annoying. <laughs> I feel, uh, I still feel so bad for people that, like, got double goose eggs last night from Draymond and Gallinari. That's so brutal. You could have got three. You could have very legitimately had Draymond Green, Cunningham, and Gallo, and then just, I don't know. Ugh, I would have lost my mind. All right, so Philly... All right, everybody's in play. I do need to look at this a little bit deeper. Why is this? Why is everybody from Minnesota popping so hard? Yeah, I'm just a little high on everybody on Minnesota. So something to keep in mind. All right, so Teague is probably the least sexy pick here. 6,500. So he needs 32. Just barely eked over that twice. That's not going to be the spot for me. Wiggins needs 30. He's been crap in four straight. Before that, he hit 30. Before that, 46. Um... What's the low end of Wiggins? 28. Yeah. So I like Wiggins just from this game. Butler at 9,000 means 45. He had 44 in the last one. He's been above 
40 essentially in his last five, well over 40 in seven, six of seven. Is that what it is? No, seven of eight. Yeah, I think Jimmy Butler's coming on. How much has his salary gone up? He looks really good on DK. What's Butler's salary done? If it hasn't gone up too, too much, he's going to be uh, very much in play. Okay, so he did climb. I mean, he's steady for the past three games, but he was in the low eights. I'm fine with Butler there. Might be tough with Braun as well, but I don't ever hate getting, you know, two good small forwards. I mean, Taj is Taj here. We know what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get out of Taj. He's going to work his ass off. He needs 26. You know, his game's like 43, 32. Um... Once again, Minnesota is just a spot where I like a lot of it. And then Towns is probably the least sexy guy on the team, other than Teague. He needs 50, by all accounts. Hit it on the dot in the last one. Last two games have been 50, 50 pointers. Was struggling before that. It's Carl Anthony Towns. Not that I expect anybody to be able to see this very clearly. So this is uh, the the bars represent the points per minute in that particular game. The blue line is the amount of minutes that he played. And then the green trend line is uh, a five-game moving average of the uh, fantasy points per minute. So Towns started off okay. Relatively large trend down. Has rebounded a little bit lately. But... He's averaged 1.13 fantasy points per minute, which is right around where he's at now. So I think he's probably priced correctly, which makes it not super exciting. It'd be a lot more exciting at 84, but up at 97, I'm going to pass. Then to Philly. It's a fun game. 8 o'clock start. Maybe I can convince somebody to go to a sports bar that may or may not uh, play that game so I can watch some of it. And like I said, I won't be playing tonight, but I might throw like one or two lineups into a dollar GPP just for something to track since I'm a degenerate. Can't get away from it too much, but I won't be able to have cash volume that I'd like. Okay, so, you know, we know who we're looking at here. Seventy Sixers. Okay, so we'll look at Embiid. Okay, so obviously Towns guards Embiid. That's a great matchup for. Embiid, and then I would guess Butler would guard Ben Simmons. So that would put Taj. Who guards Co Covington guards Wiggins? Man, the Sixers. Does Covington guard Butler or Wiggins? They probably put... Covington on Butler and Ben Simmons on Wiggins, right? Reddick guard. Because then Reddick guards. Oh, I'm in my own head. I'm in my own head. I'm losing it. Let's just look at Embiid. And then we'll look at. Probably that's it. I mean, obviously you have to look at Ben Simmons, but Simmons needs 50. He's been over 40 in one, two, three, four, five of his last seven. Um, I don't, that's not for me. I think it's just Embiid. 11 means 55. Yeah, he's got, coming off of a couple of days rest, coming in fresh. Towns is 
nothing defensively, so I think Embiid will pop a lot as a center. If you can fit the value, I think we're going to need a little bit of news to be able to get two guys comfortably, but we'll see. I don't see anything else on the Sixers. Um, Covington on DK seems fine. I think Saric is probably fine on DK as well. I'm interested to see what kind of minutes Trevor Booker gets because um, he's he played 25 in the last one, 20 in his first game, but that's both, you know, one, no McConnell in both of those, no Embiid in both of those, no Bobby Covington in one of them. So it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. Who who loses out on the minutes between Amir, you know, how much does Saric lose? Does Rashawn Holmes just not play? Who knows? Now we'll go to Dallas and San Antonio in a game that only the state of Texas cares about. Dallas, 97.25 implied total, 14th on the night. I believe I'm making that up because of the... Yes, I am. Um, as of right now, I'm projecting Kawhi to play and to play right, like right around 22 minutes. Um, so we want to look at Berea... And Farrell, well, probably just Berea. Yogi Farrell sucks. <laughs> Sorry, Yogi. Hey, boo boo. Um, yeah, there's not much to like here. Yogi Farrell on DK, 3,800 is always sort of a, a look. And then uh, our boy Maxi, probably in play on DK as well. Oh, yeah, look at this, 47 degrees right now. But this is not really the game um, to target. Outside of the fact, like, if you really want to watch Kawhi come back, it's probably a good spot. Um, I guess I'll look at Berea. Needs 27. Um... Yeah, he's been up around in the 20s for the past couple games. I'll entertain Berea. Not my favorite thing in the world. But I don't really have a ton of point guards over here, so. Other than that, I guess Maxi, 3,800. If you want to fully punt, he needs, what, 20. He's been right around there in the last three. If you need to fully punt to fit in studs, I can see why that would be a decent move. Um, but it's just not. It's just not the game. Then you get Spurs 101.75, which would be 12th. As I said, I've got Kawhi in at 20 minutes or 22 minutes. He's at 7,000 in salary. You can't play him. Um, I mean, if you want to play him in like a GPP, sure. You know, take that flyer. But otherwise. There's nothing there. We need to see him come back. I mean, it's, there's no guarantee he even plays tonight. But we, we need to at least, um, you know, let him get off of his... Why am I searching for just Aldridge? Probably because he's the only play on the Spurs. What was I saying? Kawhi. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he's just... He's probably going to be on a minute's limit. And the Spurs are, like, a very realistic team to not let him play too much. Especially in a shit game against the Mavs. Yeah, I think Aldridge is going to eat. He ate against Dallas earlier this year, didn't he? Yeah. Put up 50 here, which was value, and then 64. So, nothing really changed for Dallas. Let's just go ahead and lock Lamarcus in there now. I don't mean lock him into my lineup, but like he's certainly on the short list. Danny Green at 44 would be 22. Um, yeah, if Danny Green's going to play, I'm okay with that. Now we'll be on to the final game. Nobody looks good on DK for the Spurs. Kings and Suns, 
I believe this game is a fake line. Nope. Kings are actually favored by four and a half, which is comical. Uh, Willie Colley Stein's supposed to be back, so that probably neuters Zebo a little bit. Um, and then all, I don't, all of their guards are just sort of. Bleh. How do you figure out their minutes? Garrett Temple goes from 37 to 32 to 19 to 20 to 11, just out of the rotation, basically. You know, you get Buddy Heald is now up in the 30s. Darren Fox goes 28, 21, 29, 36, 23. How could you be confident that anybody's going to get minutes? Justin Jackson comes back from the G League, plays 33 minutes. Like, how do you how do you account for that? I can't. You can't play these guys in cash. You can't. You you just can't be comfortable playing any of these guys in cash. Maybe Buddy Healed. Twenty seven. I think you can play Buddy Healed in cash if you expect him to get the minutes. But I'm not writing anybody down. I just don't trust it. It's just too much risk. Um, so Marquise Chris on DK looks awesome. 4,100. And same for Tyler Ulis on DK. 4,200. I guess I'll take a look at Troy Daniels. Can he hit min salary? I'm not looking at the shooting profiles. It's not really what I'm looking for in this game. Suns 102.25 implied total. It's 11th. Yeah, no, I don't want Daniels. TJ Warren, 8,000. Is, is he down? Nope. Up. Yeah, like, I don't... I don't see the need to get TJ Warren for 40. Hasn't done it in three games. They're just so short-handed. I have Monroe sitting right now, implying that Chandler and Len play. I think you can make a case for Len at 4,900. I think this game's a stay away from cash perspectives. You can get there for GPPs. Because you'll get a lot of differentiation, but I don't want any part of it for cash. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dump everything in, into the optimizer and see what comes out. But that's it for me. Those last couple of games are just tough. There's no natural plays in my opinion. Nope, wrong way. Nope. There we go. Still wrong. There we go. All right, let's load in the projections. And we'll bump up the random. And go. A lot of Wiggins. Out of Porzingis, I didn't expect Wade as much as he's there. Okay, so Randall. Wiggins. So this is saying Teague and Wall. All right, clearly will not go John Wall. Teague didn't make the list, so I'll leave that open. I won't go Wade. Small forward is a split, so I'll leave that open. Zinger at 76%. Ooh, Randall 62 and Taj at 62. So they're telling me only take three of those guys so let's take Randall off and then let's look at center Embiid Brolo 
I'm going to do Embiid and Wiggins to start and see what opens up. Because that'll change the, the calculus. See, now it's prioritized Taj and Porzingis. So let's do that. And then that becomes Gary Harris, which I'm comfortable with. Okay, so I did like Ball. The other one would be Berea, which is, you know, not, not the most exciting thing in the world. I'm locked in at shooting guard. <laughs> I've built all of this, and I don't have a single piece of LeBron James. Um, Did he come up at all to start? Yeah, let's clear that out. And let's lock LBJ to start. Because he's going to be the chalkiest guy. What am I? Ooh, 12 6. I didn't even notice that. Where do we end up if we lock Braun? Okay, so we lock Wiggins. It becomes Randall. And Taj. And then we'll see where we go from there. Gives me 50-50 on Embiid, which is interesting. But it, that probably makes me go to guys I don't really want. I'll go with Ball. I'll go with Gary Harris. I don't think that I'll end up with Embiid in this case. Man, I'd like to end up with Brooke Lopez, but that seems difficult. I think Gortat is my favorite there. Gortat opens up. Prince and Teague, which I don't really love, but that's not a bad placeholder. Lonzo, Teague, Wiggins, Gary Harris, LBJ, Prince, Gibson, Julius Randle, Gortat. That's not bad. That's not a bad placeholder, in my opinion, but we're going to need news regardless. That's it for me. Um, if you like it, like it. That would be cool. If you didn't like this video, uh, I would appreciate it if you would like it anyway. It's just helpful. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check out my Patreon. I wouldn't be bummed about that either. Um, website has the projections. And um, as I said, I will not be around for lock tonight. I'm likely taking the night off outside of maybe a dollar or two in a GPP just for something to pay attention to. But... I've got plans tonight, so tonight is a no-go on DFS. Um, I'll be back in the morning tomorrow with a strategy video, and then we will go live for lock um, Wednesday night. So that's all I've got, and uh, good luck tonight, everybody.